The Song of Achilles, written by Madeline Miller, was published in 2012. The book retells the events of the Iliad by Homer, and of the Greek-Trojan War, from the perspective of Patroclus, and his imagined relationship with Achilles. The story starts with the birth and early childhood of Patroclus, who was the son of Menoetius. Ever since he was a boy, he was small for his age and constantly bullied, which made him a disappointment to his father. The king brings his nine-year-old son to the court of Tyndareus, as a suitor for his daughter Helen in marriage. When the young boy is eventually rejected, he's forced to take a blood oath, declaring he'll protect Helen's marriage. A year later, Patroclus is exiled when a nobleman's son insults him, and he kills him by accident when pushing him. He's exiled to a faraway kingdom where he meets its king Peleus, his son Achilles and the nymph and mother, Thetis. Achilles likes Patroclus a lot, and asks for him as his companion. They become inseparable, and their friendship turns to romance as they get older. His mother, the nymph Thetis, a god, doesn't approve of this relationship, since she thinks Patroclus isn't suitable for her son, who's destined for glory. She sneaks Achilles away to train with the centaur Chiron, who's notorious for training Heracles and other great Greek warriors. Patroclus manages to find him though, and joins them for two years as he studies with Chiron. When Achilles is 16, Peleus asks for his son to come to him, revealing that the Mycenaean king Agamemnon is seeking support from all the scattered Greek kingdoms. His brother Menelaus's wife Helen has been kidnapped by the Trojan prince Paris, and Agamemnon has decided to lead his troops, together with other delegations, to Troy in order to get her back, and he's hoping Achilles will lead part of this army. Thetis has learned about a prophecy that Achilles will die when he goes to Troy, so she uses her godly powers to hide him in the kingdom of Lycomedes. He hides there, posing as a woman and since Thetis still wants to end his association with Patroclus, she ensures that he's married to Daedemea, Lycomedes' daughter, and she becomes pregnant. Patroclus is very sad, and finally finds the location of Achilles's whereabouts from Peleus, and he travels there. They remain hidden, until Odysseus and Diomedes arrive and expose them. Achilles didn't pledge an oath to protect Helen, like Patroclus did, but still can't resist the idea of eternal glory through his conquests. Since he knows about the prediction that he will die after the death of the Trojan prince Hector, he decides to just not fight him. Achilles quickly clashes with Agamemnon, as the king expects to be treated as the first among the Greek, whilst Achilles thinks he's superior due to his excellence as a warrior. The Greeks are stuck since the wind is too weak to sail their ships, and a priest says that Artemis requires a sacrifice, Agamemnon's daughter Iphigenia. He brings her over, saying she will marry Achilles, only to slash her throat at the altar. This sacrifice has the desired outcome of pleasing the gods, as they provide the needed wind for the ships, but at the same time, they bring a lot of tension between Agamemnon and Achilles, as the latter feels that this act has tainted his honor. The Greeks start their conquest of Troy, the city created by the almighty Apollo, surrounded by massive walls. They raid the local farmers around the city, so that the food supplies run low in the city and the city is overrun by farmers looking for protection. The Greek also use the women that they find in their raids for slaves, and Patroclus urges Achilles to claim a young woman called Briseis in order to save her from much worse. Achilles has established himself as the greatest Greek warrior with ease at this time and loves that he's fulfilling his destiny. Patroclus moves his attention to working in the infirmary, silently dismayed at Achilles' actions but still supportive, since he realizes it's his chance at immortality. Agamemnon claims Chrysesh, another captured woman, who is the daughter of Chryses, a priest of the mighty Apollo. When Chryses asks for her return and offers rewards, he's sent away by Agamemnon in a disgraced manner. Chryses calls on Apollo, 
who sends a plague to wither the forces of the Greek. When Achilles speaks out and says Agamemnon should give back Chryseis, he claims Briseis instead. Furious at this, Achilles decides he and his troops will no longer fight for Agamemnon, since his honor is shattered once again. He resolves to not fight until Agamemnon apologizes and kneels for him. Thetis sways Zeus to help the Trojans gain strength and further beat the Greeks, making them regret that they allowed Agamemnon to disrespect Achilles in this way. The Greeks suffer many losses, as the Trojans break down the Greek walls and begin setting the ships on fire, which is the only means for the Greeks to return home. Patroclus, seeing so many men suffer around him, who he's gotten to know after tending to their injuries, is sad. He can't convince Achilles to change his mind, but makes a plan to impersonate him, by wearing his armor. Achilles agrees if Patroclus returns when the Trojans retreat. In Achilles's armor, Patroclus is successful in charging and making the Trojans retreat. But when he's in the heat of battle, he doesn't turn back, instead he presses on, and even kills one of their mightiest soldiers, only, in the end, to be killed by Hector. When this news reaches Achilles, he feels like he has nothing left to live for, and returns to battle to kill Hector, only to be killed himself by Paris shortly after this. The Greeks build a mighty tomb, but don't include the name of Patroclus, since Achilles's son, who Thetis brought to Troy to replace his father, doesn't want Patroclus to soil his father's name. Patroclus's shade roams the earth until Thetis, finally, gives in, and includes his name on the tomb, and in doing so enabling them to reunite in the afterlife. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe.